This week we'll focus on observational, participatory, reflexive, and performative modes of documentary film. Make sure to view the videos in the supplemental playlist on D2L to enhance the lecture. Observational mode asks what if filmmakers were simply to observe what happens in front of the camera without overt intervention. Observational mode looks at social actors as if the camera is not present. Technological advances after World War II around 1960, 16 millimeter cameras and portable sound equipment enabled the synchronization of sound in film. Documentaries could now shoot and record film with greater mobility. Post-production avoids voiceover, commentary, music, sound effects, intertitles, and formal interviews. Ethical concerns can arise from this hands-off approach. Brothers Keeper and Grey Gardens have subjects with mental health concerns. Observational mode, often called direct cinema in the United States, has the pioneers of Frederick Wiseman and the Males' brothers. Participatory mode. Here the filmmaker interacts with their subjects, creating a sense of collaboration or confrontation. The filmmaker's interactions help shape the narrative. This interactive means of expression has its roots in call-in radio programs and sociological and anthropological investigation. Cinema verte, meaning film truth in French, depends upon participatory mode to provoke and interact with subjects. The first Cinema Verite documentary is Chronicle of a Summer, directed by Jean Roche. Participatory documentary gives a sense of what it's like for the filmmaker to be in a given situation and how that situation alters as a result. Biography, autobiography, History, essays, confessions, and diaries are among the most popular modes for participatory documentary. Emphasizes the interaction between filmmaker and subject. Interviews, direct involvement, historical issues. Michael Moore works within this mode often by provoking and confronting his subjects. Reflexive mode. The processes of negotiation between the filmmaker and viewer become the focus of attention for the reflexive mode. Reflexive documentaries ask us to see the documentary for what it is, a construction or representation. Reflexive mode challenges conventions of realism and its attempt to appear invisible. It's the most self-conscious and self-questioning mode of representation. And the example used here is man with a movie camera. Performative mode emphasizes the subjective qualities of experience and memory, primarily addresses us emotionally and expressively rather than factually. Performative mode rejects the notion of objectivity. Some adjectives associated with performative mode are personal, experimental, emotional, Performative mode is influenced by avant-garde and poetic styles. Examples of performative documentaries, Tarnation and the Beaches of Agnes. A quote from our textbook author, Tarnation, about the filmmaker's effort to understand why his mother became mentally ill and his own childhood, a nightmare that draws on the diary, confession, or essayetic traditions. Performative voice is often, we speak about ourselves to you, or I speak about myself to you. This week's assigned film, Grizzly Man, uses participatory, observational, and reflexive modes to create the narrative, released in 2005, directed by Werner Herzog. 
answer one of the questions to consider from the syllabus for your critical paper. Question one, how important is Timothy Treadwell's participation in the narrative in Grizzly Man? What does his presence add to the film? Question two, what modes of documentary does Grizzly Man use? Name the modes and the specific aspects they bring to the narrative. Question three, director Werner Herzog appears in and narrates Grizzly Man. What does his first person point of view bring to the narrative? I thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a productive week.